Good morning world. So this afternoon I stepped out for what I thought was going to be a brief moment and got caught in horrible traffic just outside which for where I live is a sign that winter is coming and that prompted me to want to do a quick video for our friends suffering from seasonal affective disorder also known as SAD or um, winter blues. So I'm gonna try to make this really quick so let's jump right in. Five things that you should be doing to prepare if you know that you suffer from seasonal affective disorder or you've just experienced the winter blues over the last few years. First thing is you need to get your home ready for the winter season. First thing you need to do is declutter. You have to declutter, get all sorts of stuff because clutter kind of clothes us and we want your home to feel open. So you need to declutter and sort of refresh your home for the winter. Um, bring in that new energy, bring in fresh, um, pretty colorful stuff. And uh, I know during winter, we have a tendency to use the darker colors, the deeper colors, but those are not necessarily all that happy feeling generating kind of colors. We want light and airy, bright colors that are going to bring that light energy into your home. So declutter and refresh your home and make, don't forget your lights and your mirrors. Check your light bulbs, check your whatever it is that you use. Make sure that you have your lights, make sure you have your mirrors, make sure that if there are windows that had been covered over the summer because you were trying to hide from too much sun or whatever, keep your home cooler, get ready to uncover those windows. Make sure that uh, you're bringing in bright sunshine, good positive light energy into your home. Second is get your winter wardrobe ready. In the winter, again, they're selling heavy, dark, deep colored stuff. But when we're working with seasonal affective disorder, it helps to have the lighter fluffy stuff. Um, and in the winter, because in a lot of a lot, many parts of the country we're doing layers and covering up, we have a tendency to just dress, but not, paying as much attention to that whole, you know, looking cute, looking sexy kind of thing. So, but during the winter, when you suffer from seasonal affective disorder, you still want to carry that, you know, cute look that feel the looks that make you feel good. No, you're not going to be wearing some cute little dress uh, or skirt that is going to have you freezing or nice little muscle shirt, or whatever it is that, that you got that guys wear to feel good about themselves, but you still want to make sure that you're dressing in ways that make you feel good. The, because when you look good, you feel good. It's just, that's just the way it is. Make sure that you're getting into your winter shopping or your winter taking out your clothes and sort of, and looking to make sure that you have the things that you enjoy, that they, maybe you've lost weight, maybe you've gained weight. Make sure that you have clothes that fit your body right so that, you know, whatever it is that you're gonna wear, whatever day you end up wearing something that you feel good about it, that you feel like when you look in the mirror, you talk to you kind of thing. So get get your winter wardrobe ready for that. Fine and even get started with an exercise program. And the more fun that program is, the better. It could be, maybe you're going to the Y, maybe you are doing one of these online stuff. I know there are a lot of these dance classes, dance workout class type programs. Wherever you're going, look in your, start looking in your community to see what is available, what is within your budget, so that you can, by the time winter comes, you already well in the way because exercise is one of the ways, you know, the whole endorphins stuff and exercise makes you happy you you feel better about yourself when you're exercising you get that energy from exercising and of course you know muscles always make me feel good <laughs> so just get started find a program and get started with it um start creating and making a social calendar or a social commitment calendar why i say a social commitment because we can make plans to do stuff but as you start feeling down the tendency generally is to uh maybe i don't have to go anymore you want to cancel but when you have commitments that are less easy to cancel then 
you find yourself having to be out a little bit more. So make sure that whatever you're committing to are things that you, in your normal state, when you're not feeling down, you would enjoy. Don't make commitments to do something that you're dreading. Because the last thing you want is you're already not feeling your best and you have to go to some event you're dreading. No, make commitments for things that in your normal, everyday, happy state, you want to do and commit whether it's going to be okay you're volunteering and you're going to so you have to go to this place to volunteer with working with some kids maybe you are committing to going to a play with your friends maybe you're committing to um going on a trip whatever the thing is make sure that you're committing if it's let's if you're going to the theater buy the tickets now because it's kind of hard to just say uh forget it after you've spent 200 dollars on tickets or you know whatever it is that you enjoy commit and finally get your support network together because you know you're going to need them when the blues start setting in you need your friends that are going to be checking on you make sure that whoever's responsible for checking on you making sure that you're feel seeing how you're feeling make sure that that person is still part of your network maybe you decided at at the end of the year or last year at some point that you don't want to be friends with whoever was doing this for you last time. So make sure now you need a new person. Maybe the per your close friend who used to check on you in the morning has moved away. Make sure that that person, maybe they're not completely replaced, but that that role is filled. Um, make sure that you have your, whatever it is that role, whatever roles that you had someone play in your life to help you get through that seasonal um, disorder at last year make sure that you have a person and if you did not have these roles filled actually I think I'm going to next week I'll do I'll try to do a video on the roles that we need um, the resources that we need for a seasonal affective disorder um, I that's pretty much it yeah declutter and refresh your home get to be ready for winter get your wardrobe ready because you need you still have to keep that whole I look cute I feel good about myself thing going um, find and begin an exercise program as much fun as you can get it out of it make your social count social commitment calendar because when you're committed it's easier to not it's not as easy to cancel and get your support network ready because you're going to need them and you need them to be ready you when you don't you want everything to be ready and get started even before you start feeling symptoms because hey what they say an ounce of prevention is worth I don't know the rest of it but you know it's easier to prevent stuff than to have to deal with the aftermath all right that's all we have for today good morning world have a great day